Welcome back. Psychedelic here. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. Uh, today I spent most of my day in downtown Lincoln uh, shopping around different antique stores and game room as it's called and I actually came out with some nice nice batch of 45s that are pretty obscure and I actually didn't know any of these 45s that I picked up except for like one and I think I'm actually going to keep either two or three of them because they're actually pretty decent so um, hopefully this coming week I'll be sharing uh, some some of those 45s along with some samples of what they sound like uh, so you guys can get a taste of what they are and uh, one of them actually turned out to be a really cool kind of semi local garage 45 that I did not know about prior so pretty stoked about that well I got four LPs here tonight and two of them are I guess you can call them semi grails Definitely stuff that I've never imagined owning anytime soon, especially this first one here. But um, got around to uh, you know making some great sales on Discogs lately to uh, be able to afford these items. So um, sales have been really helping out, and I actually you know kind of waiting on the next Grail to come along <laughs> to uh, splurge on. But uh, we shall see what happens. Just kind of waiting on it yet, but no. Um, Everything in this video is actually, you know, non-US bands as well. They're going to be mostly from Europe. Uh, I got two UK bands, one France group, and one from Morocco, of all places. So, let's have at it. So, to begin with, uh, I got this one here. I'm um, starting off with the heavy hitter here. I ordered this one from Canada. This is an original UK copy of Little Free Rock. Very happy this turned out in the condition it's in, uh, according to the photos, because on the photos were a little sketchy, but I still took a chance uh, considering these creases, but actually it doesn't look too bad. I think most copies have this crease, or, you know, the, the creases, but also the lamination peeling from the sleeve, so still looks pretty good for its age. I mean, we're talking over 50 years old, but you know how some of those laminated covers can you know how fragile they are for how thin they are um, but yeah a little free rock so they formed probably maybe uh, two years prior to this um, at one point they actually featured Peter Green of Fleetwood Mac who I don't think they did any recordings with them maybe they did but he didn't last very long due to like recording contracts he wasn't very pleased with negotiations or something something or other um, so it's basically like kind of like a power trio, but it's got a lot more things going for it. They got special guests, you know, you got someone on Mellotron, and there's some bells, some string arrangements as well, um, once in a while. But for the most part, this is very heavy, much more in the hard rock vein. But it's also got some like blues-oriented riffs sprinkled around, um, and kind of a progressive hard rock kind of the primary genre for this one and of course you know some psychedelic blemishes here and there but yeah this has been a long time one you know ever since like 2015 I think five or six years ago is when I first heard this and you know during my kind of heavy psych garage rock period when I first really started getting into it this is phenomenal um, especially the tracks with the Mellotron I love Castles in the Sky it's probably one of the stronger tracks on here as far as the writing and Dream has one of the more better guitar breaks in my opinion uh, but the whole thing is pretty steady it's got great production sounds if you guys love bands like Andrew Meta, um, Open Mind, Sam Gopal maybe um, you know some of those like kind of dark gloomy hard rock bands from the time um, Kind of a straightforward hard rock sound, but great production, like I said, on the, uh, especially the drums. The drums really kick, and that snare, I just love the sound. All the all the instruments are really finely tuned, and they also do a version of The Creation's Making Time, 
which is like a 10 minute closer. They kind of do their own rendition of that track. Um, so yeah, really worth investigating. I think they actually did a recent reissue of this on Long Hair, I believe, or, or the Wawa label. One of those two. I think it's Long Hair. Vinyl's about a VG plus, I would say. Still in the original sleeve. It's, it says made in England somewhere. Yep. Corner there. So yeah, transatlantic label. Very crisp copy. Very pleased with that outcome. So um, yeah, that's the thing about you know these albums from overseas. You know they're for us U.S. buyers. You know sometimes it's kind of a pain to uh, pay for that shipping, especially like I said, these sales they've been really helping out with that. So it's uh, it's been a blessing. Uh, this next one though, I did purchase from the U.S. Um, even though this was originally released in France. Um, contacted an Instagrammer because he had given me his Discogs page like years back and I'd bought stuff from him in the past, uh, Neighborhood Children, uh, Bo Brummels, stuff like that and he's always had like really pristine copies of these kind of obscurities and this is one I checked out on his list I was like ooh I'd like to have this because I'm kind of really digging these like heavy UK you know European jammy bands you know and this is one that also goes back to like that time period, you know, five or six years ago, and finally picked up a copy of this. This is the original France copy of Aim Sun, their album Catalyze. It's on the actual BYG label. Got a cool gatefold there. Shot of that. Very crisp copy, as you can tell. Uh, these things get kind of beat up once in a while, and nice spine to it. Um, so yeah, this band kind of goes back even with, you know, some connections with David Allen. Before this album, uh, a couple band members were with this band, Banana Moon, and you can definitely tell the inspiration from that band to, uh, linger on to this project. So, um, get a shot of the label here. And, you know, I paid probably about the average price for it. Not, not too much, not too much over, not too little, but just about the right price for a copy of this because it's not it's not an overly expensive record either you know kind of lingers between the hundred and 125 normally there's a shot of the label um, again really crisp copy as well vinyl wise and he did throw this in um, I asked or I told him you know I don't really need the single even though it's like the non LP tracks or at least I think they were featured in the German copy it's got a semi different track listing going for it, but this is the uh, single for these guys. I think it might be their only single. Uh, Unity and I'm not even going to pronounce that. <laughs> they do speak in their native language, so I uh, don't really care to follow along lyrically, but um, this is, if you guys love like progressive, you know, sort of Canterbury scene like psychedelic jazz rock, this has got the goods. I mean, some people might say it's a little, you know, sort of mediocre in a way, or just kind of amateurish, you know, just a lot of jamming. Relies on a lot of jamming and noodling around, but for me, I just enjoy that stuff. I just think it's really, uh, it, just, it just takes you somewhere, you know. They're just kind of doing their own thing, and even though the production's not, like, top-notch, it just gives a whole other feature to it, you know. A whole other world of sounds so if you guys like early gong especially that's about the best reference I can get for this album uh, very early gong inspired you know quite heavy and jammy kind of weird humor thrown about you know um, not too much it's more it's pretty serious you know serious endeavor here but um, aim sun this is just so happy I have this this is like one of my top uh, European discs to obtain so very very happy to pick those two up and uh, just very happy through this single in for me I, I don't think he watches my channel but really appreciate the gesture man it's just all about the gifts and you know I I admire these records that I'm obtaining lately so I got these two reissues 
Uh, I think their most recent reissues, this first one is. So I've known their second album for a long time. I have it in the collection, uh, Moishi Mixed If. And uh, I finally got around to listening to their debut album after so many years knowing about it, you know. And I picked up on COB, otherwise known as Clive's original band, with their debut album, uh, Spirit of Love. This came out in 71, I believe. The years are kind of sketchy on this. Some say 70, 71. I'm, I'm pretty sure 70's um, about accurate. Got lyrics inside on like little pieces of paper. Just kind of a neat, neat little idea. It's the most recent reissue. I think this came out last year. Some liner notes there. This came out after his passing. Um, Clive, who was originally in uh, the first lineup of Incredible String Band. I think he was on their first album, I, I believe. Um, even though this does feature like several members kind of, you know, contributing to this project, um, I described on Instagram, I said, this is kind of one of those records you listen to. It just gives you visions of like, you know, centuries ago living in like Yorkshire Dales, you know, kind of off the grid living off like these ancient times, you know, very organic in sound, you know, uh, and very much in the very acid folk, psychedelic folk realm with, of course, progressive writing, you know, very, you know, not very, but like a little more complexity in the writing, the way that these tracks are written out. There's so many highlights. This whole thing just kind of flows in this very spiritual aspect, which I really love about this. And you know, the first time I heard this screaming in the car was when I went on my first uh, trip this year to North Platte. I was streaming this and I was thinking, man, this whole thing is just, it just flows kind of like a gentle river, you know, on a summer day or something. It kind of gives you those, those calm feelings, you know. And so, of course, I shouldn't be listening to it when I'm driving on the interstate, but, you know, it was still, still comforting. But, uh, yeah, the whole thing, it's got this kind of spiritual aspect to it, and sometimes it's kind of got these kind of cryptic moods throughout, you know? A little haunting, a little longing, yearning, all sorts of uh, emotions come up. But if I had some favorite tracks, I would say, probably starting with Wade in the Water, which is like, um, mostly done with the vocals as like a background texture uh, for this song, you know? And it's got a, like I said, a very natural sounding voice and vocals. You know, they're not trying to compete with like, you know, some of the top singers at the time. You got tracks like Serpent's Kiss, it's probably the most trippy aspect on this album. Uh, it's got some sitar and, does it have sitar? Might be a dulcitar, so. Uh, yeah, Spirit of Love. Can't recommend this enough. And I do prefer this, I think, over their sophomore album. Uh, very, very quality stuff here. It's on the Bread and Wine label. I, I have a feeling that's not what the label is called. I thought it was something else. I think it's East Central One. That's the label. Um, high quality transfer, and I'm just tickled to own it. Okay, and on to this last one. I received this in the mail today when I came back home, and... Um, this is, again, it's the Moroccan one, and like I said, I'm just trying to kind of branch out a little bit more and kind of get psych and garage, all types of different sounds across the globe, and this is one I just kind of stumbled upon, you know, like we do on YouTube, and I think one of the tracks that stood out on here is kind of more more of a track that's been comped a lot on different compilations, C-Bar, which is the final track on here, but I haven't even shown the band. So this is Les Ferez Mergi. I'm not even going to try to pronounce these names. I don't speak Arabic, so. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what they're saying. The sounds in this really produce uh, the goods here. So this came out in 1974, but I think a lot of these tracks were actually recorded earlier. And it features a lot of like different string arrangements, but also these very natural um, Almost Middle Eastern, I mean, I guess Moroccan, I guess the only way I can describe it is kind of like a Arabic, 
almost Turkish kind of sounding pop music during the time period. Um, you know, I don't really have the descriptors on this yet. I'm just kind of experiencing this one for the first time. I'm still trying to like absorb what's all going on here, but of course, very psychedelic in sound. Um, to my surprise, you know, you don't see a lot of these kind of records around this time period in this country in particular. So um, I would say the highlights, though, are definitely on side two, from what I recall, the last two tracks, C bar and. Uh, yeah, that second to last one. <laughs> um, like I said, I'm not going to try and pronounce these, but um, if you guys want to check this out, I think the reissue is fairly cheap. I got this for like 10 bucks shipped. So I uh, really wanted to take a chance on this because I was really enjoying some tracks while streaming it. So yeah, this is fantastic. I think the original was on the Philips label. This is on Sudafone. Pretty good sound quality. Got no complaints over here. And that about does it. So hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I probably could have gone a little more in depth on some of those, but um, just really, uh, it's kind of late at night here too. I'm recording this at night, so I just want to get this kind of wrapped up because it was kind of a long day and it's been really hot outside and it's kind of just affecting me in some ways. Anyways, guys, take care, and like I said, should have a new video perhaps this next coming week, or this week, um, with those 45s. Take care, and we shall see you soon.